Recognizing this, the Buddha discovered how to best approach suffering. First, one shouldn't bathe in luxury, nor abstain from food and comforts altogether. Instead, one ought to live in moderation. The Buddha called this the middle way. This allows for maximal concentration on cultivating compassion for others and seeking enlightenment. Next, the Buddha described a path to transcending suffering called the Four Noble Truths. The first noble truth is the realization that first prompted the Buddha's journey, that there is suffering and constant dissatisfaction in the world. The second is that this suffering is caused by our desires. As the Buddha said, attachment is the root of all suffering. The third truth is that we can transcend suffering by removing or managing these desires. The Buddha thus made the remarkable claim that we must change our outlook, not our circumstances. We are unhappy not because we don't have enough money, love or status, but because we're greedy, vain and insecure. By reorienting our minds, we can grow to be content. With the correct behaviour and what we now term a mindful attitude, we can also become better people. Master Chin Kung pioneered the use of the internet and satellite television in propagating the Buddha's teachings. His recorded lectures are distributed in books and on DVDs, CDs and videotapes. He has sponsored the printing and distribution of the Buddhist canon, Buddhist sutras, books and images, as well as books on moral education. All of these are freely distributed worldwide. To this day, the master still teaches tirelessly on a daily basis via satellite television and the internet to audiences around the world. This is because what he teaches resonates with what every human being seeks for in life, which is peace, harmony and happiness. Things which nevertheless are not easy to find in today's world. In terms of what we want and what we have, Often, these are very different things. And what we see now in the world, even though we have religions, and religions are supposed to give you comfort and give you peace and harmony, we see a lot of conflicts. We see violence. We see intolerance. We see extremism. I'm curious to know, what are your thoughts and why is it? that there's a big gap in what we want as human beings and what we actually end up getting. This world we're living is originally a heaven, a Western Pure Land. Why did we turn our world into our present condition? To put it simply, no one believes in the words of the God anymore. We don't trust the teaching of saints and sages. We do not accept the teaching given to us by God. And we believe in ourselves. And we believed in obtaining benefit for myself. So much so that if my parents have a conflict with my interest, we see news about children killing their parents. When my wife and my husband are in odd with me, I can harm them to reap their benefit. The problem arises from education. The number one party that's responsible is the media itself. In the past, family education is a very important part to the Chinese community. In a family, everyone pay attention to the future of their offsprings, to their children. So a family will invite the best teacher they can find to come to the family to teach the children. So all the elders in the family will pay respect to the teacher when the teacher does arrive to show that level of respect to the children. So when children see the elders in the family are so respectful towards the teacher, how can the children not learn sincerely from the teacher? When I was six, my father took me to meet with my teacher first. In the shrine, there was an image of Confucius. 
My dad kneeled three times and prostrated nine times to the image of Confucius. Then he did the same to the teacher. This is how respectful my father showed me as a child. We need to be having the right attitude towards the teacher. In turn, teachers will teach the child to be filial, to be loving to the parents. The parents, it's difficult for them to teach the children, hey, you have to love us. But for teacher to say, hey, students, you need to respect me. No, that's also difficult. So the parents will teach the children to respect the teacher, and the teacher will teach the children to love and be filial to the parents. This is the foundation of all learnings. But such foundation are very rarely to be found in modern society. Now, our children are being taught by the television station, by the content to be found in the internet. Violence, sexual misconduct, all sorts of negative teachings are found on TV and on the internet. So our children are being taught to do those things instead of being filial and respectful. Almost 40 years ago, three government officials from the Ministry of Education came to uh, approach Professor Fang Dongmei. I was there at the time. They are talking about reviving traditional culture. They're asking what's the best way to achieve this. Then the professor actually said to the uh, three government officials, first of all, you need to um, terminate all three television stations and you need to stop all newspaper from being produced and stop all magazines. Because he was worried, all the content that's being shown on the television, on the newspaper, and in the magazines, they are destroying traditional culture. So media played the most important part in educating the public. So my teacher said, there were two type of people who can bring peace to the world, but they can also destroy the world. The first type is national leaders. They have the power to do so. And the second type are media personnel. Master, I'm just curious. Have you ever felt sad in your life? Because <laughs> I see you're always smiling and you have such a beautiful face. All obstacles, they are there to help me better myself. So, not really. Mm -hmm. Buddhists believe in following the precept. No matter what situation we encounter, when we are always mindful of these teachings, then there's no sadness.